Tim, how are you today? I'm good, how are you? Fantastic. Great. How's the fishing good been? It's been fantastic. Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, yeah, we have about six to ten inches of ice reported from the ice fishermen. We've had lots of ice fishermen in today getting smelt, shiners, and suckers. And uh, fishing's reported to be very good. Please tell me you have cut bait suckers. I have cut bait suckers, tip up nice. suckers, smelt, and shiners today right. for you. Well, what can gonna, I get you? We're going to take a dozen smelt and a medium sized cut bait sucker because we're going to do some gigging. Okay, great. I'll be glad to get that for you. All right, thanks. Okay, so we've got. First lake. So first lake is not anything like what we're used to on Winnipesaukee, 45,000 acre glacial lake. Uh, we don't have the humps that we have on Winnipesaukee at all. But what we do have are lots of nice little flats. It's a deep lake, 100 feet deep, 150 feet deep in places I believe. Uh, but we have all these nice little flats here. And this is where I, we seem to really do well is on these, on these flats. And the, the good thing is that they form all these cool little inside and outside turns over in here. So we'll launch, we'll launch down here. And actually we're gonna launch. Get the laptop to work, yeah. Right here, in the Camp Auto Road. And we'll head out across. Now we can stop and hit this, this one here, this flat, maybe fish this inside turn. But uh, we fished it last year, and we didn't have a whole lot of luck on it. We didn't really start getting on fish until we came over and started fishing all these little S's, these S-shaped turns that are over here. These ones here, up in here, uh, even up in this inside turn here, we got some fish. But we got the majority of our fish right in through here. But there was one place we didn't go last year that I would really like to make it over to. Um, I'd like to check this inside turn, but this flat right here, right on the edge of this steep break, I really, I really want to check that area out, and this inside turn up in here. A lot of tight contour lines here. Right. It's going to be real steep in there. Right, and if you get any fish to come up out of the deep water, they're going to be right there. They're going to be really close to you, so if they see that jig bouncing around up here, or they smell anything, they're going to be close, if they're deep. If they're not deep and they're cruising these contours, well, they have to come by us when they come by to go back out into deeper water. Uh, so I say we come out and start off on these ones and see what happens and work our way across until we get into an area that's, that's holding some fish, that so we've got some fish coming through. And then, you know, we'll, we'll fish it until we beat on those fish and they don't want to bite anymore, and then we'll, we'll just keep moving around. So we're using the Navionics web app in conjunction with the Navionics boating app on our cell phones to scout out an area that we want to fish or multiple areas that we want to fish tomorrow when we get out on the ice. So with the web app, it's, it's the exact same thing you're going to see on your smartphone. And with the web app, we can find an area that we want to fish, like say in this, this area here. We can pull it up and go right to it on the phone. Now this isn't a huge lake so we don't really need to plan any routes or drop any pins or anything like that. We just need to be able to identify where it is. So tomorrow when we get out on the ice we'll actually have the Lorances turned on and it's a little bit of a process but we can take this information apply it to here then when we get on our snow machines to take off across the lake we can then transfer the data from the phones to our Lorances so that, one, we don't have our phones out in the cold killing the batteries, two, we're not running the GPS function killing the batteries, and three, it's hands-free. We don't have to deal with our phones anymore. But it's going to start with the research that we do tonight with the Navionics web app. And you just go to the Navionics website, click on the web app link and it's going to pull this up and it's the exact same data that you'll have on your boating app on your phone or on your iPad. Really it uh, takes a lot, of, a lot of the work out of standing around at the launch trying to do this or trying to do it on a phone with a much smaller screen. Now we've got a much bigger area that we can look at and then just transfer the data and save a lot of the, a lot of the headache of trying to do that you know, on the shore, at a launch, or 
you know, like I said, on the phone. So check that web app out if you're going to do any pre-scouting for any spots that you've never fished or maybe a new area on a lake that you've fished that you've never fished before because we've found some of our favorite fishing areas using this web app. been in a spot we've been out here it's snowing and windy we've been out here for I don't know half an hour at, at most it's the first spot we're in 25 feet of water through a little bit of chum down there and I just called this spot a bust and said let's get out of here we were making chit chat getting ready to get the ambition to get out of here and go to another spot it's pretty windy and snowing pretty hard and uh, this guy came in like a rocket and just smashed that tube jig Laker number one Timor Outdoors TV, first Connecticut lake. Thanks to Treats and Treasures for the good bait. It makes good chum. Let's get this down here, get him in back in the water, and get another fish. Looks like he's took up plenty of energy. We've been struggling like crazy to get these fish to commit. They've been just bumping our lure. Finally got one to chase it and hit. There he is. Little guys, that's why. And God, he ever inhale that blade spoon. I've been working the a new rattling blade spoon down there. He just inhaled that thing. Wow. Uh, we might be on to a new lake or lure here. That rattling blade spoon has been getting a ton of attention from these lake trout. No bait. He, he's got that deep. I might have to bring this fish home. We'll find out. I'm going to get some photos and get back at it. Well, hopefully you got some valuable information out of this. The idea was just to kind of give some tips and show a few fish catches. And we had a good day. Uh, we had one one beautiful fish that had was at least a six pounder that we couldn't get the camera out. We had uh, some visitors that had just shown up and the camera ended up buried. And in the commotion, we just never got that big big fish on video. But it was a pretty nice fish. It was at least six pounds. I uh, got that one on the tube jig. So just remember, you know, be a, be uh, be ready to move when you need to move. Don't don't spend too much time on these fish. But you know, we got into a case today where we had fish, active fish coming in and chasing jigs and biting jigs, and we stayed in one spot for probably four hours. Uh, but don't be afraid to move, move a lot if you need to. If those fish just chased, just get out of there and go find some fish that'll that'll bite. Uh, keep your jig moving and set the hook hard. Keep your line tight. Fight those big head shakes. Good rod like those 40 inch Dave Gens Legacy Series. Uh, I mean uh, split handle. Uh, great rods for lake trout. They cushion those head shakes, but they give you hook set power. So hopefully you enjoyed this. We appreciate you watching.